Hello guys, this is Farzad Shahbandi from visualcomputer.net. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to cover the bilateral filter. During uh, previous lessons, we covered the OpenCV CUDA and we had two lessons. The first one was the uh, information about the GPU and the second was uh, the Gaussian blur. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to cover the bilateral filter and uh, some of the items here, as you see, are the same as a uh, previous session. If you, you, are, you are not familiar with these items, please uh, review and see the lesson number two. And the same as lesson number two, we have the CUDA and also the uh, CPU version of our libraries on in uh, about the OpenCV. We have two namespaces, STD and CV. And uh, here uh, we introduced this syntax to use it in uh, or video capture uh, like this. And after that, we have two uh, functions. The first one is the CPU version of bilateral filter. And the second one is here uh, is uh, the GPU version of bilateral filter. Okay, first of all, uh, we will have uh, the uh, named view, we create a named view for us and uh, we start the while and uh, we read uh, an image uh, check if it, if it is uh, empty or not and if it is not empty we continue we get the tick count as I described it before and uh, the main part is here it is the CPU version as you see there is no, no CUDA behind it the bilateral filter, uh, let me show you, uh, press the control and click on it. It will open the source file here, the bilateral filter. Okay. Uh, above it, there is a description about uh, using it and uh, what it does and what it will do for us. Uh, bilateral filter can reduce unwanted noise very well while keeping edges fairly sharp. However, it is very slow compared to most filters. This is what bi bilateral filters do. Okay. Uh, let me show you the items. Okay. It will get uh, some parameters. The first one is the input. The second was it is the uh, output, a D and two sigmas. Okay. And it describes here that uh, if the uh, sigmas are uh, below 150, you can use them the same. And uh, um, about the D, it is mostly between 5 or 9. And the 9 is about the offline application, and 5 is for uh, real-time uh, application of it. Uh, so we get done to work and uh, after uh, bilateral filter is done, we will end the get, uh, get tick count and after that we calculate the frame per second uh, and we put it on the screen, on the top uh, edge of the screen and uh, we continue. Okay, let me put the CPU version in the main block here so only the CPU version will be run uh, let me build it by pressing ctrl shift B it is built this is the rooster as I described it in the previous session let me run it okay as you see here the frame per second is something about uh, 45 46 something like this and as you see let me make it a bit bigger you see that it is uh, somehow cartoonish and uh, the uh, uh, it, the filter is clearly made on my face here okay let me describe you the uh, GPU version of the bilateral filter. Here, 
uh, we use the CUDA information here. We can put it here. I comment it. We don't need it now in uh, our version. And uh, the name window is the same as before. While look uh, the same as before. Everything like before up to here. And after that, we need to introduce a GPU version uh, of the images. Uh, for example, uh, here we had a mat to describe our image, but here, uh, as I described it in the previous session, we need another version of our uh, image, which is GPU version. We need to upload the image into uh, image GPU. And we check the image GPU. If it is not uh, empty, we continue. Uh, we start the uh, get tick count. And here is the core area. Uh, it is the CUDA bilateral filter. Uh, the input is a, uh, an, a, a GPU version of image. The output is the same. And uh, we put nine, as I told you. And uh, two numbers are the same for 50 and 50. We had the same in, in here. As you remember, the frame rate there was about 45. Now we start it here and put the, um, put the frame rate in this version. And let me put it in the GPU version and build it. Okay, it is done. Let me run it. Uh -huh. Here. Yeah, as you see, it is about 2,800 frames per second. Compare it to 45. It is unbelievable that uh, a GPU can help us this much. But it is, uh, as you see, very clearly uh, uses uh, my uh, GPU. And uh, as you see, my GPU is... 3060 of RTX uh, and uh, the the CPU is uh, Core i7 as I know yes uh, and it is the 12th uh, generation but the GPU uh, is very efficient here and more efficient than the CPU by a long distance to it Okay, this was uh, our uh, lesson, but let me change the numbers to something uh, extraordinary high. For example, put it here about, for example, 50, and here put it, for example, uh, 100, and here 100 for the CPU, and I will do it the same here. Uh, 50, 100, 100. Okay, these are the same. And uh, let me change it to CPU version. Run it. As you see here, it has a very long lag very big lag here it is uh, below one frame per second as you see let me go out now i want to use the gpu to run it and here as you see there is no lag the frame per second is 120, 130, and it is very long distance between these two frames per second. So, uh, if you have uh, something like Jetson Nano or Jetson Xavier, and uh, you have a very uh, strong GPU on them, it is better to use uh, your GPU instead of using CPU for image processing. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Bye.